uh, the organization having clear collaborative way to achieve those uh, goals co co collectively. And also trust is a central pillar, which the entire organization is built on. I keep on saying you can take this to the bank without any fear or favor, is that if we don't have trust as one of our key pillars, we shall not be able to build the company culture, the company values. It remains a real strong pillar. And one of the issues around collaboration is our ability to be able to do what? Is our ability to trust each other. Without trust, then now we work with a lot of suspicion. We agree with that? Anybody who would like to add towards that? Why trust is extremely important for us? The three processes of collaboration, trust being a real central pillar. And I even alluded to it, trust, empathy, and the three key things of self-awareness of where we are. Okay, anyone? Yeah, okay. So let's continue. Uh, collaboration in decision making. And what does collaboration in decision making entail? You know, uh, collaboration CDM, and we'll see it from time to time, aims at improving the flow of information among the superiors and subordinates. In uh, collaboration decision making, decisions are based, based on views shared by the leaders and the team members. Awareness is also created on the consequences of mutual uh, decisions. How do you make, my question to you is that, how do you make, let me stand. How do we make decisions for our, um, for our organization? Is it only the, does it come from the top to the bottom or also uh, the other people, team members, let's call them team members, which they are anyway, have a position and a voice to be able to make some of the decisions for the organization? Or what is the best way for us to be able to do that? Guys, please unmute and just, um, what is the best way? If, if you had a team, is that the way it is? And also, when you look at it, how would you like, if you were working in that organization, how are decisions made? Are they just made from the top and then they are cascaded? You don't have any input. That's it. Doesn't matter where you are what you do, you know, and then you almost feel that they are being imposed on you? Or do we have a joint mutual way of making decision? Okay. I think we all agree that the best way to make decisions is have a joint approach in how we are making decisions. So there are two central assumptions of central decision making. Better information will lead to, will lead to better decision making. Tools and procedures should be kept ready to adapt to the changing conditions. And also we look at valuable decisions and actions are taking after pooling the knowledge, information, values, and preferences of various team members, because people have different pre uh, preferences. And some of the time we want everybody to have one preference. We forget that people are people. People really want to be taken at how they are. Self-awareness of who we are. When I, when I understand who Catherine is, when I understand who Alice is, it makes me a better leader in terms of understanding Catherine's preferences. Catherine doesn't, is not very energetic in the morning, but is in the afternoon, she will do work for 10 people. But just because we want to say, well, our department, our work starts at eight and everybody should be ready to work. Why don't we look at the preferences for different people? You know, can we prefer to work from home instead of coming for this meeting physically and it can still work? So let's understand that various team, uh, team members will have different preferences. The team members get a chance to lean from, to learn from each other. So that's very important. Okay, sorry about that. So what is a collaborative system? What is a system, guys? Any questions, any reactions? What is a um, collaboration system? What is a system? Let's get back, let's get back. I know that uh, we could have been disrupted and uh, felt um, a bit off from uh, the 
the thought that the internet was not working, but now we are back stronger and better. <laughs> what is a system in your view? Or even just what is written in the system? Do you have a collaboration system in your organization? Nancy, Edith, Alice? I'll now start talking so that we engage a little bit more. A collaboration system? Um, yes, we have a collaboration system in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, tools that uh, we share, like, uh, we have, like, normally like meetings Sorry, that uh, we have together that yeah. uh, we share ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we correct one another as departments. We have mm -hmm. uh, service level agreements that each department signs with the other department so that we mm -hmm. see ways of improving. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, fantastic. I love the fact that you have an SLA between departments. And I think it's uh, some people say, no, it's it's uh, it's staples, um, uh, agility uh, processes. It uh, it uh, it um, slows down work. But I think once everybody understands an SLA, it's just to hold everybody accountable. If um, if your department, for example, Nancy says that uh, recruitment and around time for for other departments will take maybe 90 days, for example. You have that SLA, I mean, signed between those two departments. So if you bring people uh, um, before the 90 days are over, well and good, and that's that's what you should be done. But if we bring people like 100 and day, uh, 180 days later, three months later, then we can come and say, well, what's happening to the SLA? Um, what, and then you will say this is an isolated, maybe this is really an isolated hire. Maybe it is hard for us to be able to get, uh, it's hard for us to be able to get this resource out there. We are trying every way possible. But by the time it's getting there, I'm sure you are collaborating internally and saying, hey guys, eh, we are already at the 90 day mark and we seem to be going off tangent, what can we do to be able to help this hire? So I think SLA continues to be a strong, um, a strong, a strong way of collaborating internally and making sure that everybody can be held accountable. But as long as everybody knows and understands and appreciates some of these things that uh, we put to be able to move the progress forward, then that's important because we also know that some people can actually hide behind their inefficiencies when they don't have these things. They will just come and really just mark time over there without uh, showing that work is moving and work is progressing. Okay, so anybody else <coughs> would like to share their experiences? So we say a collaboration system comprises of a set of tools which allow the team members to share their ideas, talents with other members. This helps in the accomplishment, uh, accomplishing the task both efficiently and effectively. And the system doesn't have to be, to be tangible. Sometimes it's just a discussion like what we are having now. It's collaboration, you know, the plot. Uh, platforms that we have put in place for us to be able to 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 communicate those are really those are set of tools that they all come together the knowledge the tacit knowledge the explicit knowledge that people have in the organization all those are collaboration systems that we can use to be able to work more efficiently and effectively Okay, a collaboration system is influenced by numerous factors. There are two fundamental aspects that need to be customized to align with the goals and also take into consideration when it comes to corporate culture. What is your corporate culture, if I was to ask you? If you saw a big, um, a big investor and they say, what kind of a corporate culture do you have? Are you able to define it? with an elevator speech. What's your boilerplate as the guys who do all these things? I mean, they say, what's your boilerplate? Our boilerplate is this. This is our, uh, our opening statement as the organization. That's what the boilerplate is. And does everybody understand what it is? If you're in a lift and someone says, oh, I work for XYZ organization and uh, this is what we do, would you be able to say in one clear sentence, what your organization does and what kind of culture it has passionately 
without any without any hesitation even the people who work for the public sector if i say i work for the ministry of defense you know what is the mandate of the ministry of defense to the citizenry what are the values of the ministry of defense and then after that what kind of services would i be coming to look for as a citizen you know at the Ministry of Defense. So everybody has an opportunity, whether it's in government, whether it's uh, in the NGO sector, whether it's corporate, you know, even in the society, we all have the boilerplate should actually be there with us because that's then we truly understand how collaboration, how we can collaborate with other people. So the two systems are the two are the two main systems and we will look at them and things that you know the unstructured collaboration and the structured collaboration chasing answers to the unknown questions using tools to share information about the problems at stake and increasing personal productivity the other one is structured collaboration sharing common knowledge written tools written rules structured and set workflows that does not change. And we all know this, you know, the unstructured uh, things that we know, questioning on the corridors, hey, Nancy, um, how is your board paper coming up? You know, you're supposed to be giving me that information so that I can feed into my into my report as well. And then Nancy tells me, oh, oh, by the way, um, I've got a bit of a challenge there. I'm still waiting for some information that still hasn't come in from X, Y, Z, then we say, okay, fine. And when do you expect to have it? So really unstructured collaboration, you know, in the corridors, asking unknown questions, things. And that is when we really are looking at how creative, how agile, how passionate we are using unstructural, uh, unstructured collaboration. It should actually take a lot of preeminence in our organization. Structured collaboration then means that as we are moving along, things will have to fall into place. When we are a group of people, they must be written uh, policies and procedures, rules on how things are done. So that when I am not there, someone else can have reference, has a point of reference for them to understand how things are done. And those are, they come actually from unstructured um, uh, collaboration to structured collaboration so that we are, continuously moving in the same direction. And interchangeably at an organization, we use all these uh, two types of systems all the same, or all, all the time. So in the morning, in the afternoon, when we are leaving, so all these things are used all the time. An example, unstructured collaboration, structured collaboration at your place of work. Please let's share. Is it a good thing? Are we are aware of it? Are we, are, are we aware of it much more? Anyone? Much more? Are we are aware? Are we aware? Hmm? Okay, so let's move. Structured collaboration. Our focus here is on the structured collaboration as it is widely used in all sectors, introspection of behavior and com communication is encouraged by structured collaboration. It aims to increase the success of organizations as the team gets to engage in collaborative problem solving, you know? So we all come together. These are the things that govern us as an organization. This is how we behave um, around each other. This is our culture, you know? And so it's something that Nobody can say that I did not know because it really has a point of reference. And the unstructured one, well, pre predominantly used a lot for us to be a bit more creative. And then we come and make sure that we are doing what? We are coming to the structured collaboration. Any question? What are some of the positive aspects around uh, structured collaboration? Anyone? What are some of the really positive uh, aspects around structured collaboration? Alice, Nancy, Edith, Lillian, anyone? Yes, Marim. Yes. Structured one means uh, the organization. Just speak up a little bit more, Alice. So, is it my volume that is very low? The, the structured one, it yeah. is kind of like managing knowledge in an organization so that. Even if people go away, still the process can take place. 
Yeah. It's kind of preserved there. You don't lose the, what you have developed in terms of structure for addressing mm -hmm. uh, doing the collaboration. I, we also do have some unstructured good in my place. When there's an issue arising, usually we call a kamukunji so that everyone comes in and keeps it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would qualify for unstructured. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alice. Someone else, Edith, Nancy, Candy? Structured and unstructured collaboration. And I've, I've already put um, the positive aspects of uh, structured collaboration. It is easy to organize, no doubt about it. We have all the facts, we have all the figures. It is, uh, it is excellent for hierarchical structured organization. It increases uh, productivity and proficiency. There is no contradiction in relation to information. All members of the team understand and acknowledge their position and act accordingly. You know, the protocols are actually followed. There is no contradiction around the information because how a CEO is treated is the same way that uh, the lowest person in the cadre is going to be treated. And what we keep on saying is that everybody is important in an organization. There is nobody who is more senior than the other. The thing that you have is more responsibility you know, but we are all here to support the organization, achieve its goals. So once we understand that, like what we had checked in the other, in the other, in the other slides and uh, we discussed that everybody is important in this aspect. Any question, any reaction? Any reaction? Okay, so as much as uh, it has really some positive aspects of uh, this process, we also see that one of the things is that it can also be uh, uh, a bit of a hindrance limitation of structured collaboration. It does not foster innovation compared to unstructured co collaboration. There, there is same workflow information with no variance at all and people can become um, bored with that kind of a scenario. It can cause conflicts because, well, we keep doing this all the time and it is not working. Why can't we just do something differently? That's how now people start thinking. And then now that becomes unstructured co 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 collaboration. And then after that, we start now coming into thinking, oh, well, this thing is not working for us. How can it work for us? And then uh, it's intended for repetitive industries. It needs to be um, managed and supervised all the time. And we know that the two things that people want most is autonomy to do their work, autonomy and uh, autonomy to do their work and so that you empower them so that they become more uh, agile and uh, uh, innovative in what they are doing. Okay, so collaboration according to corporate cultures uh, and it can be in any culture, not just corporate culture. We are just saying corporate culture in the, in the context of a workplace. In order to create a collaborative working environment, the employees need to be motivated and rewarded at all times. What kind of rewards can we give? What kind of, uh, what kind of rewards can we give from time to time? What rewards can we give? Yes, Maggie? I would say recognition. Maybe employee of the year. Mm -hmm. Employee of the year, very true. Uh -huh, very true. Uh -huh. Something else? Other ways of recognizing collaboration? Let me increase my volume. Uh -huh. Someone else? So there are many ways in how we can actually do what? We can recognize uh, people at the workplace, uh, non-monetary and monetary rewards. Okay, employee of the year, you know, giving, um, uh, 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 giving people more responsibilities if there is another project coming up, seconding people to various other uh, departments that they can actually work in and gain more skill. Um, we can also make sure that uh, we, we are championing them to lead courses within the organization, you know, recognizing staff of the year 
employee of the year, we can actually set a bigger bonus for them if they are really doing well, well and such kind of stuff. Okay, so let me just take it back to slideshow. Okay. So we want to talk about leadership style. So in collaborative management, not the traditional leadership styles that we know about, the, uh, the democratic leadership, autocratic, laser affair, you know, uh, we have all these other ones that have come in, situational, transformational leadership. We want to look at the collaborative leadership style against the traditional leadership style. And for us to now just thinking through whichever leadership style that you, 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 you prefer as a human being and how do you understand your leadership style? Of course, it, it's, it's, it's accumulation of many things, your personality, your socialization, um, your experiences, um, your first work experience. So it just, it just uh, it, it, you have a predominant leadership style. But of course, you know that uh, if you're leading people and your predominantly leadership style maybe is autocratic where you will really not get the results that you, that you want to achieve, then you have to really be self-aware of who you are as, as a person all the time. I'm leading this team. Uh, these are the kind of people, these are the kind of people I'm leading. These are the results that we want to achieve. But I know that I like not to give space for people to, 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 to voice their opinions, uh, their perspectives. You remember the perspective we talked about. So as a leader, those kind of, uh, if you have that kind of leadership um, style, then you have to be more aware compared to the democratic one, even democratic one or laser fair, well, situational leadership where people have uh, perfected of saying, this is the situation, it needs me to make a decision. I'm the leader, I'll make a decision and this is the uh, decision with, we'll go with. Transformational, looking at well, making sure people that uh, are always motivated and looking up, uh, ahead. But collaborative leadership style is required to get efficient and effective results across boundaries. A collaborative leader builds good relationships, solves problems, and constructively handles conflicts. And uh, we look at conflicts very um, towards the end. In contrast, a traditional leader is more auto or, uh, uh, autocratic and takes absolute control over his team and never consults his team members while making decisions. So very, this, this you know, there is the uh, around a uh, traditional leader versus a collaborative one is the around the issue of power. So around the issue of power, what happens is that the traditional leader, uh, um, the approach, the power is vested on one single authority. Power is old school corporate hierarchy and is based on longevity and priority of results. You know, these are the results we want to achieve. This we must achieve. And I want to be uh, on, uh, on the power seat as long as I can. The new leader, using a collaborative approach is that uh, they recognize that power is more significant in a collective team. The power belongs to the people. Collective leaders allow uh, situations to develop from the best ideas of the group and team approach and problem solving. So around power. So what do they do around information? Uh, the traditional leader, as we all know, and maybe even look at your place of work, they give very limited access to information and power is maintained, you know, at that level. I belong, I am the one who has all this and I will not share. As, and uh, the collaborative leader assumes that sharing information is the cornerstone of success. More, more the, the more the, the availability of the information, the better for us to be able to have creative approaches to problem solving. Around the idea generation, you know, the same uh, does not, uh, the traditional leader does not entertain suggestions from the team members. Decisions are taken by top exec executives and they are cascaded down. You know, this is what was said at the management meeting and that's what's going to be done. But the idea generation is that everybody in the team has a voice and everybody is able to come to the table, brainstorm and get the best unique insights of from everybody. And then after that, we take it up and we run with it. Problem solving, um, 
under problem solving, we look at the, in the traditional corporate culture, team members are not allowed to participate or express their views. Solutions are generally delivered to team members. You know, there was a problem, this is it. Even simple things, you know, where people can just uh, be able to come up with their own solutions. And that's why coaching is so important in the aspect of, um, of in the aspect of leaders, leaders really empowering people and telling people, please go and look for your own solutions, then let's come and discuss them. Collaborative leaders um, create an environment of um, approaching the problem solving from a group point of view. And again, they say, we will facilitate you, we will enable you so that you can solve the problems that are at hand, because they know one of the things is that if I solve the problem, if people come up with their own solutions and solve the problem, then what happens, guys? Please unmute, what happens? when people are able to solve their own problems, the problems are, the, the solutions are sustainable. You know, they come from the people. So one of the things that is no brainer for, for the team and for the management is that the solutions are homegrown. They are provided by the people, so they are sustainable. The rules, they are a series of policies, rules, and regulations on which uh, the traditional corporate culture is relied upon. Both uh, this culture and hierarchy compel the managers and the team leaders to seek to a specific set of roles and responsibilities. That's when you go to an organization and they tell you, no, 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 me, I don't do that. That's not my role. The role is uh, Catherine is the one responsible of doing that and you wonder, okay, fine, but you can be able to do it. You're in the same department, but they say, no, I can't do it. While on the other side is that, come one, come all, all information, knowledge, skills, resources are shared. This allows rules and responsibilities to evolve. It's very good for succession planning uh, based on a greater good, further responsibilities and powers are distributed. Okay. And finally, resolving issues. How do we solve issues in the traditional aspect? Um, uh, issues are often solved by the individual without analyzing the root cause of the problem. The manager seeks temporary solutions instead of institution, instituting beneficial change that could prevent these issues to reoccur in the future. While on this other side, we know that the team members are assigned with more responsibilities, while team leaders are more involved in the process uh, because trust is considered as a pillar in collaborative leadership. These leaders analyze the root cause of the issue and address it promptly and keep work moving forward efficiently. And finally, around feedback, which is always important. I hope we are now thinking around the area of feedback a bit more with, with the urgency that do I solicit for feedback? Am I getting feedback from, uh, from, from the people who are helping me do that? So most traditional corporate uh, style, um, we just give feedback in a very formal way and feedback is not given daily. As opposed to collaboration leadership is that we work every day, instant give feedback is, is given. And feedback, you've done a good job, Catherine, today, well done. I mean, you've exceeded expectation in doing this project. And then, well, this one did not go too well. What might have happened, you know? And we see this not going well. What can we do to before it actually breaks down completely? So we already have the tail signs. Not to wait until December and come and say, you remember on April 25th, this is what you do. And you can't even remember what happened on 20, 25th of April and you wonder, why didn't you give me that feedback? So collaboration um, allows for real-time feedback, allows for real-time innovation, allows for us to be able to communicate better. Power is vested in the team and it's not vested on, on the team member. Reaction, is there anything that we can do to make this better, guys? What can we, can, is there anything that we can do to make it better? Reaction, is it things that you see? Is it things that you would like to see more around um, leadership style, the traditional 
way and the collaboration style, or it's, it's no brainer. This is what happens in organization. Please share. Please allow us to share. We are few. Please let us share. Candy at um, the county, is this what happens? Or we still have uh, people wanting to stick to the traditional style of leadership? It entirely depends on the manager. Mm -hmm. Entirely. Mm -hmm. There are those who have embraced diversity and the technology and all of you. Mm -hmm. For in the country, you find we have we have three types of employees. Mm -hmm. You have those that come from the de facto county council. Mm -hmm. We have the mm -hmm. new employees. Mm -hmm. Then those who are from the ministry. Mm -hmm. Actually, the biggest challenge has been bringing them together. Mm -hmm. There are those that are superior than others. There are those that think they are more learned than the people from the county council. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit hectic, but if, as we move on, mm -hmm. we, we are trying to be a bit collaborative. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's been a process. Yeah. It's been a process, and it's still a process. Um, but at least things are, they are a bit better than we started in 2013, 2014. We are somewhere. Fantastic. I'm happy to hear that there's been progress and mm -hmm. uh, we recognize those uh, challenges and we are ready to address them. And the thing is that um, I'm sure it would be the same, the people in the same department, maybe uh, came from the defunct um, uh, council some are newly employed and some came from uh, the main ministries. So, and you all sit in the, maybe in the HR department. So you all look at each other and wonder, okay, fine. Uko tulikuwa tunafanya u ivi. Uko tulikuwa tunafanya ivi. Uko mimi nimetoka nilikuwa tunafanya ivi. You know, and then also maybe at the county, there's also, this is my county. I come from this county, you know, I come from Meru, I'm Meru by tribe, so I, I am more entitled to be here. So uh, how have you been, what are some of the programs that you have put in place, um, without putting you on the spot, um, Candy, to, to just um, to, to address these issues from a collaborative point of view? Well, are we talking I about these issues openly? No, really, you see yeah. now, what do you, is it ethnicity, I'm a tribalism, and all of you, we've been talking about the 30%, mm -hmm. but practically it's been hand. Mm -hmm. you, you find a county like, like Meru, we have over 80% as Marians. So if you're, you are non Meru, decision making becomes hand. But, but I, as I told you earlier, we, we are really trying uh, as a mm -hmm. county, mm -hmm. even in, in the employment, we, really we especially for the last five years we've been trying to, to even employ people and animals mm. to so that to bring everyone on board and for diversity reasons because i believe with the diversity then we can achieve the collaboration better very true yeah. very true what you have yeah. said yeah diversity actually will will allay some of those fears um, yeah. people speaking a little bit more, and also now leaders becoming self-aware of who they are, their leadership yeah. style, who are the people am I leading, their perspective, their personalities, for us to be able to talk, work together, because why do we exist as a, yeah. as a, as a, as a county? Is to provide services to the Mwanainchi. And if we, our house is really not in order, it's very hard for us to be able to offer those services. And then that's when people now start complaining and they wonder, well, this is not being done. We had requested for this, it's taking too long. Then again, the cycle of five years come. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, yeah, it's very hard, yeah. But uh, if, uh, if, if that, if that is, has been recognized, I think that's the first point of uh, uh, achieving the success and putting in programs to make sure that it can move forward, okay? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, anybody else? Okay. So what are some of the skills and attitude that um, we need as, um, uh, as, as individuals, not just as, um, as a leader, but even as individuals? And sometimes 
you become the most mature one in that team and people start looking up upon you, you know, and if a leader comes and says, I like the way you carry yourself. And can I learn from you? I think that we will have achieved half the world's problems, you know. So we need mediation, we need influencing, we need engaging others. One of the most demanding skills of a collaborative leader or a person is to address conflicts con uh, con 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 constructively and effectively as soon as it arises. You know, ability to say, guys, the ball has been dropped. We have a conflict. We have difference of opinion. Let's handle it here and then. Instead of sweeping the conflict under the the uh, under the under the rug, and then it means that we are not able to address it, and it keeps simmering. It keeps until people are ready to burst. And when people burst, the kind of um, of uh, attrication that they have. Uh, between themselves is very high. So we need to develop mediation skills. We need to develop skills that uh, can really enable us to listen to the said and to the unsaid so that we understand what is happening. Uh, influencing a, a complete understanding of the organizational culture is what we said, and engaging others as a successful collaboration, uh, collaborative leader has skills in networking and relationship building, you know, ability to know what's happening over there and what's happening over here so that you are able to connect with the people. Until you're able to connect with the people, you'll not achieve much, um, you'll not be a real strong collaborator. Uh, collaborative uh, manager. Agility, complex collaborative situations require a forward looking attitude and mind. And it also means that we need to exercise patience. Patience is not, patience is not for the faint hearted. You know, everybody will fire up. There are some people who are really, who have very, their fuse is so short. They will just, you know, not become patient, even in small matters. You know, don't major on the minors. That's what I keep on saying. And it's never that serious. Can you be able to do it? And then when you do it, you show the other person, how I did it because we needed to get it out of the way. Next time, I ask you to be able to do it. But every time when you get worked up, the stress levels in this, in this country, are uh, very, very high. Everybody seems to be snapping at every little thing. But when we exercise a little bit of more caution, then we know that people, you, people will know that you have their best interest at heart. And then a collaborative leader must have empathy. Empathy. How would I like to be treated if I was in the other person's shoes? Not saying, well, me, I can't make such a mistake. I can't. I mean, how foolish were they to make that mistake? Anybody can make that mistake. And some mistakes can be very dire, but how do we try and measure up and say, well, this has happened. And it's from beginning, from the point of empathy, knowing we will let you make mistakes as we try to get better in the business, but not deliberate mistakes because you thought, ah, you think, oh, Atani Samehea too. They will just forgive me. You know, they're very nice. They're patient. They have empathy. It will, it does not go like that. So for me, as we now get to the next point of uh, the discussion is that I would like you to read at this, uh, take a look at these um, five points and think of yourself um, and uh, think whether you are a collaborative person. Um, how collaborative are you? at the workplace, at the social places, even at family level. Because if we start being more collaborative, then all these conflicts that we see and misunderstandings actually will definitely reduce and reduce much more. Someone who'd like to read for us, you can discover whether you are a collaborative leader or, uh, or not by just uh, uh, assessing. Ask yourself on the following question. Someone read for us, please. You can ask yourself, are you part of a global network like uh, IHRM, you know, uh, local networks? Do you really plug in into those local networks for you to be really collaborative and ask questions Hello. based on what? Yeah, yes, 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 Nancy, thank you. Or was it Alice, whoever, yeah. 
Okay. I can read. Thank you. Okay, let me read. Are you part of a global network like IHRM, CHRP, you know, and many other networks that really um, point towards your career, your passion, things that you really enjoy doing? Do you regularly blog or tweet employees about trends, you know, uh, not just um, uh, digital platform, but do you write? So I just put blog and tweet there just to reemphasize that these things, uh, they have better, uh, far reaching audience if you do that how often do you meet uh, at parties outside the organization who are you directly who are you not directly relevant to your immediate job demands and current operations is it people just within your sphere or do you open it up to other people as well what kind of um, I mean, and it's not a party of um, of going to have a good time, but within what kind of parties do you associate yourself with, you know, to make sure that you are collaborating? Are you or your group, are you on a group of any outside organization? How diverse is your immediate team in terms of uh, nationality, gender, age, religion, if you are a team member? Okay. You can discover whether you are a collaborative leader or not by assessing yourself on the following questions as well. Do members of your team or group have any joint responsibilities beyond their individual goals? You know, let's, let's say that uh, Alice was our group leader and uh, does, does she just expect me as Catherine, Nancy as Catherine, just to do what is on our job description, what I was hired to do as the expert or does she open it up to other people. So as a leader, you need to ask yourself, as an individual, this is where you need to ask yourself. And as a leader, you need to understand that. Does the composition of your direct reports depend on any collective goals or reflect any collective responsibilities and duties? What specifically have you done to eradicate power struggles with the your team or within the group that you manage do you have do you have reports that have both performance and learning goals you know the we just don't want to achieve the objectives of the organization but going on further and asking Catherine what are your learning goals for this year what do you want to achieve what are your career plans for the next five years you know I hear that question just being asked once once, once, once. But leaders must be deliberate to ask every time and again, what are your learning goals? If you know that they enjoy reading books, all sorts of genres, what book are you reading to enhance your whatever? If you enjoy their well-being, things around surrounding, the things that they can really are passionate about, they can actually propel people to learning goals. But if it was only asked once, that retarded interview question, what are your career goals short term and long term and of course we all come rehearsed and dressed for that question and then when i come in there but they ask me what are my career goals and they are not supporting me or the next time you want to ask that question is that when you have the next intake of um your your succession planning talent pool uh, programs that doesn't stop there it's every day and make sure that you are holding people accountable towards that okay uh uh, do you manage the money, uh, dynamically forming and disbanding teams as quickly as the situation arises? Do you have the right people in the company who know can close a discussion and make a decision? If you were to be sent to make a decision on behalf of the company, will you say, no, I have to go back and consult? Or have they given you the mandate to make that decision? Even if it is a $10, uh, 10, uh, $10 million business that you are going to close that day, and you say that, well, uh, the, the client has asked for uh, $1 million. And you know you guys have done that, whatever. At nine, you will still be running all the way to the bank and say, OK, fine, um, $9 million, let's shake hands. You know, it's not $9 million, I'm going back. You know, because you have all the facts and the figures, and you can, you can be relied upon to make those decisions. Does your group deba debate ideas vigorously? Uh, but then unite behind the decisions made. You know, we can be arguing, we can be, no, this is my decision, but we still pick the best decision for the organization, best decision 
for the issue at hand. And then, then nobody feels that, oh, you know, but you know what happened? That was Catherine's decision. The last time it was still her decision that won the day. What did her decision mean the day? So it's not about Catherine. It may be the way Catherine has structured this decision around what is happening and her input and what it is. So it doesn't become a Catherine, whatever. So the next time when people say, mm, and then Imul is a Catherine. See, Catherine always has the solutions. So that's when we stop being collaborative. Any question there? Any question there? Any reaction? Any reaction? Any reaction? Is that things that we see at the workplace? Any experience there? Hmm? Please share. Do you see yourself as a collaborative leader? As a collaborative person? Is it things that you would like to think about and things that uh, you would like to put a bit of more emphasis as an individual? Anything? Yeah. Nancy, Madam, I think, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think a collaborative leader mm -hmm. is an ideal situation and would be, uh, what did I say? Would be a real good uh, leadership style. Even though at times <laughs> you want to have the traditional leadership, knowing the kind of human beings we are dealing with because at times when you become laser hair and become that there are yeah. things that can fall in the cracks mm -hmm. but ideal a collaborative leader would be when we are all have a common understanding mm. thank you yeah thank you very much uh -huh. someone else Alice you had uh, your hand up yeah <clears throat> I was going to say that in the workplace we see, we experience both the types of leadership all the time. For example, I can consider the current acting leader because we are a team, we are a team of committee members or rather commissioners. So mm. we are all supposed to be thinking and helping the organization move forward. And uh, our, our organization deals with the, uh, creating harmony between the two levels of government. So we are always, uh, um, our motto, in fact, is cooperate, uh, consult, uh, cooperate, coordinate for harmonious relationship between the two levels of government. So we are usually working all the time towards how can we create harmony? If there is a dispute somewhere, how are we going to bring them together instead of them heading for court? So I find this very relevant, these ideas of collaborative leadership. But because we come from different backgrounds, and we are all very experienced. You'll find somebody has always been in a system where they are always saying, no, the policy, the law, the, we need to do that. Then somebody else is from a background where you are free to think. We don't always have to stick to the law. To the, you, there's no one perfect law. You can always create a situation according to the situation. So you find a mixture uh, of this approach, a mixture of people when you are going through this, it is helpful to be guided on what would be the ideal for this collaborative leader. Thank you. Very true, yeah. Uh, thank you, Alice. Uh, thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Alice, for that input, is that it's not ideal. It's We still have challenges and uh, people's opinions, the rules, you know, but this situation calls for this and stuff like that. And... Um, how, what can we do then as uh, people who know how important collaboration is? And it's not because that people don't know. I'm sure everybody knows. But sometimes we are so fixated in our personal gain that sometimes we look at that, uh, the greater good and say, well, it's going to benefit me more, you know? And this is the one point I know, if I benefit from this, my life is, you know, at cruise level and that's where I want to be. But I think it is important to always think, what is the greater good? What legacy am I living? 
So I'm happy that uh, we, we can see that uh, it's not an ideal world. And this, uh, if all this was happen, would happen then, uh, it's really at an ideal world. But we can try and make sure that half, half you know, like 80% and then struggle with the rest of the 20% to make sure that we are getting there. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we solve some... Uh, a collaborative approach to problem solving, you know. Um, so we meet these two, these two, these two plans of um, how to make sure that uh, we are collaborative. You know, sometimes even we we know how to solve problems. No doubt, you know, a problem has come, but is there a specific way? of solving problems around collaboration. If finance and HR is not working, and I like to, that's, that's a very tired example to use because then we, we are all supposed to be collaborating. What department A and department B is not collaborating. How can we have a structured way of resolving the issues at hand? What do we normally do? What do we normally do? in a very clear line, two departments not working or two people not working together. They're not collaborating well. So work is being hampered. Good interpersonal relationships are being hampered. And the reason people really just have conflict at the workplace is because they cannot seed their egos. Their egos are bloated, 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 bloated. It's my way or the highway. After all, I'm the boss. So really, let's move on. Mm -hmm. what, what's the genesis? What's the simple way of solving problems at the workplace? Okay, okay. I think the, the simple way is to have a meeting with both parties and get to hear where is the root cause of this problem because maybe it's just a matter of ego the way you're saying and then the company's goals are affected because of individuals mm -hmm. and just get to bring them up to speed that once you realize where the root cause of the problem is just do mechanisms of saying that this is just go back to your policies and say this is how we work anything outside that then is a is a personal uh related issue that can be dealt with now on performance exactly yeah we go back to the structured collaboration process. These are the rules. These are the re regulations. And again, sometimes we are so, oh, you know, oh, yeah, okay, fine, the work here. We want the best for everyone. And never read at the consequences bit. And if we won't be able to work together, unfortunately, we might have to have some consequences around it and fair and transparent consequences. But because we don't want ever to get there, you remember where we say that leaders need to be decisive, leaders need to be strong and brave to make decisions. Those, so, those are some of the things, especially in the area of giving feedback. You haven't done this. This is what is expected of you. We've given you enough time, we've given you enough days for you to be able to do that, but we still don't see it. And half the time is because we look at the person and not at the issue being addressed. Now we start attacking the person instead of the issue. Once, once we know that it's issue related and it's not the person, then it becomes uh, easier for us to be able to do that, yeah. So uh, some of the approaches that we can use, and it's very similar to what Nancy has said, the collaborative problem solving model demonstrate effectiveness with employees with a wide range of professional, social, emotional, and behavioral ch challenges across a variety of different settings from various consumers, clients, team leaders, team members in the company. You know, we are all here to work and we will definitely be able to solve problems as they arise. But if we do not, if we do not articulate and be very aware that problems will come and we will need to solve them, then we will not be able to use some of these uh, pro, uh, collaborative uh, solving mechanisms that we have. As applied to the organization, the model sets forth two major Tenants. First, the collaborative approach analyzes the root cause of the issue and the bugs present rather than merely pointing out the mistakes. 
it's Nancy who did it. You know, it's Nancy, nobody else. Everybody knows. Of course, we know it's the Nancy who did the problem. I mean, who caused the problem. But what, how did the problem come about? You know, the second, these issues and problems are resolved after mutual discussion where everybody speaks and everybody listens rather than show, showing superiority or trying to dominate. So dominance does not come into play. And this is what happens. But what happens most of the time when we know it is this person who made the mistake, it's clear it's this person who, makes, who, who, who made the mistake. What happens in that aspect, unfortunately, instead of looking at the analyzing the root cause of the issue and the bugs present, the bugs could be, you know, what, what are the feelers that we need to understand how this, uh, how this happened? What happens in majority of the time? Let's discuss that. Comes very, uh, it becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Collaborative problem solving. If we apply these two major tenants. Someone please unmute themselves instead of pointing the person. Is that what happens most of the time? Maggie, you've been very quiet. Uh, someone else? Is it approaching lunchtime? Are people getting tired, uh, getting hungry? Edith, Lillian, anybody else? Candy? Even us as human beings, we first blame the part. Even think about home, in the home front. Intimidation. Start pointing at the, at the person. Mm -hmm. If it were and see this will not have happened. In most cases, you even start doing the letters before, before really knowing what, what, what could have happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even before mm -hmm. you come to the office on Monday, you really have a letter. Mm -hmm. On your desk, you know? Yes, we, we even don't give them room to mm -hmm. say, I was yes supposed to come for the meeting at eight, but my mm -hmm. car knocked on my way to work. Mm -hmm. so we rush to make decisions before listening maybe to the person or mm -hmm. knowing the risk. Because in everything, of course, there is a, there is a reason as to why something happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we that's judge. true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. We just judge very, very quickly. Okay, yeah. someone else? Someone else? So we judge very harshly and without knowing. And then what happens? Breakdown of communication. We start forming camps. Even by the time you know is that, hey, 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 you know what? Catherine, there's a letter for you Monday morning. It's there on your desk. So you're already coming with such apprehension. They are not even listening to what has happened. And we, uh, we actually do what? We, we spoil the opportunity or miss the opportunity of showing the problem as it should be and trying to get to the root cause of it, what would have happened and have a better way of closing it so that it doesn't occur in the organization again. One should accept the fact that a unique alternative will be encountered in solving problems because different ideas are shared by team members. Resolving problems collaboratively is not very complicated and it should not be complicated at all. The leaders need to have experience as well as patience. You remember where we said patience and uh, develop the competencies that you need? Some of them are mediation uh, skills. It will take a while for all involved members to feel comfortable. You know, can you imagine when, um, when you're called by your supervisor, when you have done something wrong, you know, at the heat of the moment, how do you feel? You already feel defensive compared to saying, okay, fine. Uh, them calling you and say, oh, Catherine, I, this has happened, but allow us time to think through it. And then we can discuss about it later. Um, it's important, it's urgent, it's a grave mistake, but I know that um, we, we need to discuss it when everybody feels that they are at a better place 
sober minds so that we have this whatever and maybe also think and they even tell you think of whom you would like to propose to sit in this meeting someone who knows about this issue so that we discuss it objectively and look for solutions compared to this statement Catherine this has happened you've made this mistake this is not the second time that you're making mistake um I want to you to see me in my office at three at three o'clock, they didn't even check your diary to see because those are some of the collaboration tools to see that you have a meeting. They might not see what meeting it is about, but they just decide three is the time I have time. I need anyway to get it out of the way I was living at four. So it gives me time to get it and done with the selfishness around what can, how can we resolve this problem? And maybe even that meeting at three o'clock was the $10 million deal that you are going to represent the company with. So we must think ahead. We must think of how would I like to be treated if I was in the other person's shoes. Any reaction? Any reaction? Any reaction there? Any reaction? Mm -hmm. So let me skip that because it's just some of the... Um, some of um, some of the like case studies that we could look at. So what has what are collaborative tools? They are all this and much more. Some are structured and some are unstructured, like what we looked at uh, before. And when we look at uh, the structured ways, is that we have um, we have files, we have documents, we store them uh, either in hard copy or electronically. We have computer conferencing, like what we are doing now, collaborating via a webinar, electronic meeting systems. We have all those in the offices. We use Teams, we use uh, Zoom, we use uh, Skype. I mean, there are very many that we can use. And there is the electronic uh, workplaces. Um, anyone who, who's using any of them? or anyone who has encountered any? I doubt uh, we need to go through them um, uh, in detail one by one. Are you using any others? Very electronically, very digital. Uh, Alice, how was the transition of everybody using, and I'm picking you specifically because you've worked in the, in the government for many years and also now sitting in this commission and the, the transition of using um, digital platforms has been a bit of a challenge, uh, especially when the, the platforms are not well set up. It's not the use, you know, using this, uh, it's very easy, but just having the platforms and for them to work adequately without causing any frustration to anyone. How has it been, the transition um, in terms of collaboration? I think, I don't know, but I think it's generally a learning process because of, first of all, there's the challenge of technology. Um, more of the younger people are uh, uh, computer savvy, so they don't have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So managing the tool itself to be able to use it properly has been a challenge mm -hmm. for the older people. But once you must mm -hmm. start with the whole acquisition of the gadgets and the training, I think we are getting mm. better and better by the day. In the beginning, there was talent, even communicating, even the ones presenting. But I think we are getting mm. better. And uh, it is getting to work better, I think. We are becoming yeah, better. That's good, better. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I like I like one word that you have actually said, alluded to. With training, it gets better and better, you know, and that's collaboration. I don't know how to do this. I ask people, well, I understand I can uh, break out people um, in a meeting. How do I do that? What to, where, how do I navigate that? You know, I can, um, and I can mute everyone in a meeting. How do I do that if I am the one um, hosting the meeting? And, and really, we have, uh, we have come a long way. I mean, let, let's let's give ourselves uh, the brownie points that, that we deserve. Uh, between last year, between uh, the start of uh, last year and now, 
we've come a long way on how we collaborate. In fact, every time I keep on saying, I'll go to the studio and record the song of please unmute, please mute, you know, and it becomes a bestseller. Then after that, you know, I get loyalties all my lifetime because it's a, a real hit song. So we've, we've had those uh, documents handling, computer conferences, electronic meetings, electronic uh, workspaces and stuff like that, yeah. So how are people, um, how are people affected by collaborative management tools? You know, um, let's let's start from there. So ARC is a collaborative management tool like all the other ones that we have seen, all the complex interactions, applications, collaborations, and processes that an enterprise holds are streamlined through an uh, our collaboration management tools. They're just those online platforms. Uh, three interesting axes of the heart of the CMM, the collaboration management model, uh, is used in describing all the processes in the enterprise. So it's just like having one, um, you know, like, in fact, this is a good example. Office 365, Office 365 now lets, lets you collaborate. They, there are many ways that um, there's that Cortana telling you these are the reminding you some of the things that you need to do. These are the people you are collaborating with. Even at the end of the week or at the end of the month, it tells you this is how you collaborated. Have you seen those tools? Fantastic from our MS Office, you know, and it has Teams as your collaboration platform. It has um, your what do you call it, your calendars to synchronize calendars with other people. It also has all these now applications. I mean, the ones you have been using, your Word, your PowerPoint, um, your Excel, you know, all those other, uh, your Outlook. So you're able to have a seamless uh, collaborative management model. So that's it. So I don't know which one you're using in your office, but the most important thing is that we are looking at the complexity of your business is actually extremely simplified because of the use of these uh, models that you can use. The most important thing is to understand that they could be complex, but they are coming to provide a simplified solution for your organization. So acts are found out in all companies uh, that all companies are struggling with this question. So ACK is just a, another, com it's, it's just like a, an online, it's, it's, it's a tool call ARC, ARC, that assists companies become better at collaborating with each other digital platforms. So they ask, how can we leverage our existing technology to analyze, uh, to realize real measurable financial savings? Where, uh, where can we get the return on investment when implementing new innovations? How can we get the broader team aligned as an agent for significant positive change? Isn't it these things that, uh, allow me to stand, are these not the same things that uh, we are talking about collaboration? Think about when uh, COVID happened and people needed to work remotely. What are some of the questions that CEOs always ask HR, always ask the management team? You know, how are we using our platforms to collaborate and communicate with everyone? How is everyone doing? You know, and we find all, and so all of a sudden, Zoom shares on the stock exchange skyrocketed, and you wish that you had actually bought Zoom shares at uh, whatever that New York Stock Exchange, if you knew what we know now. Anyway, so that's where we are. And then we also say, how can we get best return on investment when implementing these new innovations that we have brought in the organization? What are we going to do? And then how do we get a broader, the broader team aligned uh, as an agent for significant positive changes? I'll, I'll pause here and say, and ask, how have we been able to leverage on collaboration management models, whichever you use, whether it's the, uh, the Office 365, which I know many people use, and um, like ARC, another, uh, another collaborative management model, or uh, even uh, the, the one that we're about to check, ISIM. What results have you seen? Or what are some of the challenges that you have seen, like longer working hours, you know, um, what what have you been able to to quickly gain 
business traction or what have been some of the challenges and how have you surmounted some of them? Please let's share. Please let's share so that we move on a bit faster. And let me know when you want a break. I'm, I'm all open for collaboration in terms of um, making sure that we can have a break and then we come back maybe after a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Collaborate, uh, collaboration management models, especially the online platform ones. How have they been? How have you leveraged those models for the benefit of your business? Anyone? Or they are just working? As long as they are working, everybody is working. We are all happy. Looking for a socket in this room. Anyone? Please share. Nancy, Maggie, I feed the children, what have you guys seen? Edith, Lillian, please unmute yourself. Candy, even at the county level. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Or once we set, the only time people use, yeah, uh -huh. Maggie, did you want to say something? Anyone? Don't shy away from sharing for us to be able to learn how people are affected by some of these models. I think they have made work um, easier. Some of the processes have been streamlined we've been able to see significant um, cutting of uh, costs. Maybe we used to have to provide breakfast for people working in the office every day, but now since people are not coming, then whatever travel cost has also reduced uh, because people are not traveling as much as they used to travel before. So I think there've been quite a number of um, good uh, savings for the company in terms of, especially for, uh, from a logistics and administrative point of view. But of course now just looking at some of our real technical work and that's why organizations exist. What is my core mandate? What are my services? What are my um, products that I take out to the market? I think that has been, those are some of the things that have really led into capital expenditure for your business to be able to, to progress and to keep up float and uh, uh, you've saved on one side, but we are saying this saving again has to be pushed on this side. So we almost uh, balance at the end of it all. Okay, any question there? Any question? Okay, so what are the, some of the benefits of um, collaborate, uh, collaboration management uh, models? Uh, using CCMM not only helps in sharing information, but also operates in the context of broader business processes, workflows, foundation uh, for managing business processes and optimization uh, op uh, operational performance is, is provided by applying some of uh, the models that you have in the company. So um, look at your models. Critique your models, reflect back on your models and say, even if it's just a simple model, it doesn't have to be complex. You know, you don't have to buy and call in experts and consultants, whatever simple models that you have, even Excel tools, you know, those are models that you can use, you know, all those platforms that you have been using. I think it's time for us to start thinking if we are collaborating to push our business forward using those platforms and those models, how has it helped the business? What are some of the challenges that we have seen? And please write, write them down. As the experts who have now come to this meeting and go and challenge people, do we really have a model, a collaboration models? And uh, what, how are they working? What are some of the challenges instead of saying, oh, that's very complex and we leave it for the business development people or the IT people, we have the knowledge, even at department level, why don't we just start at our department level and say, well, let's look at some of the models that we have for collaboration, okay? Question, reactions, input, 
experience shares sharing anyone okay uh you'll allow me to finish this other one and then do people feel that they want to take a break a short break or we can just go on and finish i'm all for hearing your views oh if we are to have a break how long hmm, good question i was thinking that we have a break of maybe 10 minutes is that too short i'm all for a break uh, that's fine 10 minutes is fine 10 minutes is fine okay the rest from us or we just continue i'm, I'm happy whichever way i'm just um cognizant that uh uh, people sometimes, um, the concentration, we need to re-energize, stand from where we are. Uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Someone else, Alice? A break is welcome. A Mine break is welcome. Would have been about 15 or 20 minutes, but that might be too long <laughs> for the others. Yeah, I'm just also looking at uh, the, the challenge of uh, logging in in the morning. So the longer break will almost take us back to to that um, anxiety space again, you know, um, and I like to get a good flow of, I like to give a good experience to everybody on this platform. So 10 minutes is okay. 10 minutes is okay. So do we it's take okay. it from now? So it's 13.10, uh, we say we come back at 13.20. Is that okay, guys? Stretch, make sure, that you st yeah. make sure that you stand from your, from your seat, grab a cup of uh, water, uh, maybe some lunch, and I come back at exactly, we'll continue at uh, one twenty. Is that okay? Okay, the time starts now. Enjoy yourself. I'll be with you guys shortly.
So welcome back everybody. I hope you had a short break just to be able to stretch and uh, get water and uh, be able to come back. So See my screen, guys. Can you see me for long? See it. Done. Let's not see Maggie. Let's Take what you do. Are we back? Or oh, we went and went for too long. Welcome back. I hope you were able to get a good break. Please welcome back. Alice, Nancy, Maggie. So that we can continue and you can at least have the rest of the afternoon to be able to do some of the things. Hi, Pam, welcome back. Candy, Lillian, if you missed any of uh, the previous recordings, Pam, it's being recorded, so welcome back. Yeah. Are we back? You say 10 minutes. Want us Thank to you, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably about You know, I, I kept receiving a, a message yeah. to be a panelist and I kept rejecting. I didn't know that was the only way I could uh, contribute. Ah. Ah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we are always learning. We're always learning these collaboration yeah. tools, isn't it? These yeah. collaboration tools, it at one Kabisa. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, so, thank you for the presentations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we took a 10-minute break just to be able to stretch. And uh, I hope everybody is back in the interest of time so that um it's been a long morning, but a good morning. I hope um, it's been worth your while. Beautiful. Fantastic. I'm happy to hear. So eSIM, eSIM, what is eSIM? Everybody keeps asking what's eSIM? How can I plug on to eSIM? You know, uh, are we okay? Lillian, I want to hear your voice, please, or reaction that you're back. Candy, um, Pam. Uh, Alice, Nancy. Okay, so ESIM is um, uh, it's it's a group of people who come together, just like us, um, uh, HR people who come together, and they use the ESIM platform to organize individuals who have the same kind of initiatives, you know, and uh, they use that platform for people to be able to collaborate. Let's say there's a research that is going on and there's always an annual conference um, on, um, on this, uh, uh, on eSIM. So what happens is that uh, people come together they use those platforms to be able to collaborate, especially in the area of, res uh, of research and policy formulation. They come and brainstorm on those platforms and then they come up with solutions. So it's just another collaboration aspect of people coming together, very well defined around the world and people are able to do it. So your, your organization can also become members as well. And they have all sorts of um, of discussions that go there for people to be able to express interest. So it's a way of collaboration that uh, maybe you will even find your competitor there, by the way. You never know. You will find people of the same interest have been planning to, get, to join this group. Ah, but oh, okay, they're here. So watch out for them and there's much more information on the internet. So that is how ESIM works. So the principles of uh, ESIM is to make sure that the proposed principle is to provide the foundation for the eSIM collaboration management. In fact, it's called eSIM collaboration planning model includes the following. 
there is a jurisdiction that people are drawn from various jurisdictions. So it can be across boards or it can be across uh, the same people who want to do the same kind of work. There is inclusion, and that's the most important thing is that there is inclusion, there is consensus to what we shall be discussing and um, to get try and get solution for. There is accountability, so maybe it's a portion a company A will do this or individual A will do this. Uh, there's dispute resolution. We might not all, all agree on this, um, on, on, this, uh, on this planning. Just take a big project like, um, uh, let's, let's talk uh, about an African big project is the one, the Nile Dam that is being built in Egypt. And Egypt says, well, I have the water. I am the source of the water. Then people people's downstream say, but I'm also a consumer of this water. So all the way from Egypt, all the way to Kenya, all those countries that uh, pass, uh, that the Nile feeds into their various lakes and um, uh, yeah, in their various lakes or seas or whatever it is, come and say, Egypt says, I'll be building a, a hydroelectric dam. Uh, Uganda comes and says, I'm also interested, but you're going to affect my water coming into Lake Victoria. So there's a jurisdiction, there's inclusion, there's consensus, there's accountability of how work, that work is going to be done. It's a planning collaborative tool and everybody is there. Then there could be a rise of dispute. How are we going to resolve this dispute? No, your, the, your, plan, uh, your plan has changed. Now you want to build a bigger dam. It means that we'll only be able to get 80% of the water instead of 100% of the water. So when there's a dispute there around the, 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 the work that is being done, so the mechanism is there. Then the network, who else is included in this, whatever, and Finally, we learn by doing, you know, doing the actual work. So these are some of the models that you can really use. Um, collaborative management models or the ESIM to be able to uh, to be able to do that. But what I have said is that don't make it too complex for your organization. The ARC is a model, ESIM is a model. Um, we are Office uh, 365 is a system, it's a model that works, you know, what are you working internally for you to come and say that indeed your organization continues to look into that and why I'm going back is this, how are your people affected by the models and the systems that you are using in your organization. I think that's the most important thing. Even if you buy a complex one, I don't think complexity should be the main should be the main thing, but it should be as simple and user friendly as much as possible. So departments come together and make sure that the jurisdiction is clear. Sometimes you can be told, well, you don't, you don't come from this jurisdiction so that you'll not bear inclusion, you know, open to all levels. That's what we said, consensus uh, achieved and maintained, you know, these uh, basic principles of respect for each other and a good faith dispute resolution, multiple levels of dispute resolution. And sometimes we can go to international jurisdictions for the dispute to be arbitrated and network only through an efficient network. Participants get opportunities for dialogue and consensus at several levels <clears throat> for what has been put on the table to be done. And of course, we, uh, we learn by doing, developing the various ecosystems and for us to be able to see that we have a disciplined approach to the dialogue that has been put on the table. So that was ISIMDA. So uh, check whether your organization can benefit from those kind of <coughs> platforms that are there and see how you can benefit even as an individual and for you to be able to see what you can do. Any question? Any question? So that is ISIM forum comprises of organization groups and individuals or stakeholders. These stakeholders have the ability to influence others or get influenced by others, or they have the interest in the ISIM initiative. One of the initiatives that ISIM is actually holding or getting, getting, getting to doing, then they can plug in and benefit from there. Any question? Anybody who has come across ISIM forum? Anybody who has heard about it in the past? Anyone? Okay. 
uh, something new. We learn something new every day. Okay. And of course, there's an ESIM uh, office, there's an ESIM roundtable discussion, and uh, how it works uh, in terms of representation. Any question there? Any question there? Any question there? Before we move to the next uh, idea. Hi, Catherine. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to find out now the ESIM you're talking about, is it is it a tool that is bought offline or how do you get access to it? You become a member. Thank you, okay. Edith. Yeah, yeah. You, it's more of a membership. Um, it's more of a membership body like IHRM. So you go there and see what are some of the initiative and you apply to be a member. So it's not a tool that um, it's people coming together and the various platforms that you decide to to meet, uh, to to have meetings on. It could be Teams. It could be Zoom. It could be Skype. It could be a telephone call. It's one big. Uh, it's like what I said, maybe there's research going on. Let's let's talk about um, a research on maybe crop failure in Africa and companies and organizations that really deal with climate change all come together in this forum and come and say, let's brainstorm. You know, who's going to take lead? We do our research and stuff like that. Who's, which donors are we going to approach? So it's a place where it's more of networking the approach is very, it's, it's, it's very formalized. Uh, people can meet, uh, people of the like-minded meet together and be able to take it forward. Okay, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, some of the collaboration tools that you can really use at high level just to get some of the work done very easily. You can also form your own, you know, and I'm sure maybe I, I remember having worked in, a, in the NGO uh, world where we know that uh, there was these big uh, bids coming from a certain donor, a lot of money, but you knew that if you bid alone, you might not win. So you call people of the same of the same industry or maybe people who you closely, closely collaborate with. Maybe if uh, you'll be there, main, you'll be the main recipient, but all these other people will be able to implement better than you. So you actually call them together and form a consortium. You apply for the, for, for, for the bid and maybe you win. Sometimes you lose and stuff like that. So I know there's a lot happening there. Even in the telecom industry, um, as much as people work together, you will see that Safaricom will have a, um, a mass in a certain area, but Safaricom, uh, Airtel will come and say, can I put some of my signals here? You know, there's collaboration or they will go to another area and it's Airtel or Jami or whoever has a mass there. So there's a lot of collaboration because we have said now it's there's no competition. We have to co compete, but look at what is my what is my unique selling point? Because we can all we can all use the same platform. Why are you why are you on one uh, service provider compared to the other as an individual? It's because you know what they're able to provide. What is the one thing that's uh, that uh, uh, that make what makes you make that decision to go to another service provider compared to this service provider in every aspect? Why do you use this? Uh, why do you use this product? And they are all on the shelf and maybe the prices are just uh, very, there's very minimum difference in the price, but we choose this one. So it's preferences that we cannot invalidate for people. So that's how also collaboration is key. Making sure that uh, your products are fit for purpose. You cannot say that because my products are cheap, they are not going to be, the ingredients are not going to be what they are supposed to be. And if my products are, not, are going to be expensive, meaning that maybe I have just gone in and reached and fortified a certain uh, enzyme, and that is why I'm selling it more expensively. So if you justify like that, then people will understand that is a good place to start here. Okay. And another question. Thank you, Edith. That was a good question. Mm -hmm. You see how it works. On the LMS, we'll have a lot of uh, discuss um, what is that and um, being able to do that here. I would like us to move to the next topic of change management. Any question there? Change management around collaboration. And we know that change always makes people's hearts beat like this, you know? The only thing that is not constant is change. 
But why do people really fear change? Why do people fear change? As I just, uh, those are, uh, those are, uh, um, yeah, this is how I'm just jumping these, uh, these, this, this, those, those, those slides because they are the ones on, uh, on ESIM, some of the examples that I have given. Change management. Let's talk about change management. Change management. Why do people fear change so much? Have there been any recent changes in the organization? How do you how did you implement the change? How did you ensure that uh, there was collaboration around the change? Someone please share with us. Okay, I can, yeah. I can share that uh, okay, people fear change because of the unknown events that will come. Mm -hmm. So they fear like, especially if you have like restructuring, mm -hmm. they fear like, are they going to still be retained? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, there's that fear of the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's They're how fearing I see for why their jobs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're fearing for their jobs, uh -huh. someone else? There's always fear of uh, destabilizing comfort zones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are so used to doing things this way. And now when change comes, it's going mm -hmm. to disrupt our comfort. Exactly. Coming out mm -hmm. of your comfort zone. Uh -huh. But we've talked about change from the time we were born. And we are still talking about change. And the, and the what do you call it? And the... I'm just trying to get a better spot around my the sun getting into the the window behind me. Why are people? We've always talked about change. Why can't we just get change right? Why is there always so much anxiety around change? Sometimes it's the way the change is done. It is carried away out. You know, people come and bombard you. Oh, now this is going to happen. You're going to be using this new tool and uh, this tool is going to unravel a lot of things. You know, that just uh, gets people so scared. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just the normal things. Yeah. You see, you're changing from one appraisal system or a performance management uh, system to something new that is not different. They are still the same objectives. They are targets that people are going yeah. to be meeting. Mm. But uh, the way you bring it to the people makes them get so scared. So the way we share or communicate about change matters really a lot. Yeah, exactly. to put people at, like... ease, at ease. And then they will even give us more ideas on how we go about the change. Yeah. You know, we can be told the same thing, two of us, me and Pamela but we interpret them very differently. We can even be told by the person leading the Bible study, read this verse and please interpret it the way you understand it and Catherine interpret it the way you understand it. And we have different perspectives of it, you know, but asking people exactly, what do you understand by it? Uh, this is what we really want people to understand. Is it the same way you understand it? And then someone will tell you, no, that's not the way I understand it. Unfortunately, this is disturbing me. Allow me to change my, my, my room. Sorry. Change, you see me, I'm not fearing change. I can see there is a problem. I quickly look into it and how best to address it. Yeah, much better now. I know you are also struggling. And not settled. I'm not. If I'm not settled, my people will not be settled. So we are saying that change. How we how we communicate that change. The importance of change will give us better success around people's reception. So change management is a process, an enterprise speciality, and a body of knowledge. The notion of change management is a process or task that can be described as a double-edged sword and that you know your understanding is different your understanding is different how is change communicated why is there so much fear and ask people why what would you like to hear what have you heard 
what have you been hearing in the grapevine, you know? And by the time even you're asking all that, we should not even be asking all that, we should be saying incrementally, we are moving forward with the change that is expected, you know? Just moving from a, a very basic uh, performance by objective uh, process where the supervisor and, um, and uh, the employee sit down, have a discussion, agree, yes, this is how it is. I'm very happy with my performance. Supervisor is happy with my performance. And the time that uh, they are not happy with my performance, they should not be bringing it to the table. They should have told me immediately feedback. You remember what we talked about feedback, importance of giving feedback. So, um, and then we come and say, oh, from now henceforth, will you be using the balance scorecard? Or even uh, the 360 um, degree feedback uh, performance. And people, and the, what Pamela has said is correct. The targets are the same. The competencies are the same. It's just the tool that is changing. But people want to associate with, oh my gosh, now this is what they want to. They want to put more work on our plate. You know, We are always looking at making the workplace a bit um, much more efficient and productive so that we can uh, make sure that we are meeting the objectives and also realize the profits that we should be realizing. So the first edge, a double edge sword, this is the first edge is applied internally in the organization. It aims at implementing new methods and systems more if, uh, efficiently within the company. The second edge, the second edge is applied to the change over which the company has little practice or no control. Those are some of the external environment that we might face we might face and we sometimes have no control the second age like last year was we had actually no control over covid as much as we had we started on the year we knew that uh, we were on a growth tra uh, trajectory and we were going to achieve a uh, double digit growth and all of a sudden the external environment became very different and we needed to do what? See how best to be able to apply it, okay? So change as a system, change as a system, a systems approach involves two important uh, foundations. The first one and the second one, the first one is to establish that nothing can change without affecting every part of the system to which it belongs, isn't it? We need to understand that. And the second change in, um, in any single part of the system influences every other part of the system. Can we try and give an example here? I'll just have a discussion around this. It establishes that nothing can change without affecting every part of the system to which it belongs. Just an example for us to be able to, to make it a bit more practical, please guys. Anyone? Anyone around that? Change as a system. And I'm sure you, you are involved in all these change processes in your organization. Anyone? Arishina, I don't know whether this uh, will uh, emphasize the point. One time we were changing a uh, performance management system. And uh, that meant that uh, even the way we do our budgets changes. Mm -hmm. So it affects our finances. We were more mm -hmm. geared to cost cutting and uh, using the resources we had more efficiently. So if you're printing, you try to print back to back and uh, that affects uh -huh. uh, the person. Centralized printing, you see even the way you do your procurement you have to have had certain approvals, you know, just changing that and the way you <clears throat> do, for example, like your recruitment has to be done in a given period. You need to have uh, completed this within a month. So you see it had uh, that chain effect. Yeah. It affects the way you do your yeah. recruitment, mm -hmm. the way you do your research. Mm -hmm whatever sourcing of uh, items in procurement, mm -hmm. how you mm -hmm. use, you know, being able to account for every item in terms of uh, what you're using, even if it's cleaning, you have a 20 liter jerry can of uh, detergent. 
How long mm-hmm. are you going to use it? So you exactly. see, it has that round effect. I don't know whether that ex- explains it, but you see, it's tied to the performance system that is now in mm-hmm. place. Exactly. Yeah. So it starts, and, and I keep on saying, one of the things for us to understand performance, performance is from the day I get into the door of your organization to the time I leave your organization. Take that to the bank. So the, what you do in the middle, between these two hands of mine is actually performance. The training, uh, evaluating performance at periodic levels, you know, my compensation, succession planning, everything, my well being is geared towards performance because that's the only time I become more uh, efficient. I become more motivated. You know, I need to motivate myself, but also the environment needs to motivate me. The culture that you create in the organization determines the kind of performance this organization is going to achieve. And finally, our ability to have strong performance systems in our organization actually talks into how collaboration is going to be achieved by all people in the organization. So performance is actually the central pillar for everything because inside there is everything you're trying to accommodate me as an individual, then as a team. Then after that, you're able to unpack it and say, is it working for you? And how are you being able to, how are you, how are you, how are you collaborating with the other people? So I like that uh, example where our performance management system was being overhauled and every other part was being affected in that system. The second change is every single part of the system influences the other part of the system. If I am going to recruit within a certain time frame, it affects the work that is being uh, the, the work that is being done by the other people in the department it means that if I bring this talent uh, within this resource within the given time, it means that the other people will not be overwhelmed, will not be overworked, and everybody feels happy, even with that person coming in in terms of collaboration. Thank you for that. So the change the, uh, the change problem occurs once or more divisions or groups, the entire enterprise or one or more aspects of the company's environment, the foundation of the system requires answers to at least uh, of these five Ws and one how and one H. We all know when we are implementing change, what happened? Who happened it? Who was the one involved? Why did it happen? Where did it happen? When did it happen? Around all this change and how uh, very important. The following few examples can be used to formulate specific questions. Who from the company needs to be involved in this change? You know, we have a problem. We have a change problem. We want to make sure that people really do understand what is happening around this change. What exercises need to be changed? Why do we need to change our ongoing practice or practices where, uh, where, where the changes are needed, where the changes needed the most? When will the company consider the implementation of these changes and how to change our traditional practices for better? You know, when you're asking about uh, a certain change process, these are some of the questions. You know, you cannot, you cannot leave out who, what, why where and when and how these questions we keep asking them all the time uh, but within the change context they need to be really done properly so the change program for us to be able to collaborate better is uh, creating the change foundation it aligns leadership and business elements through customer focused goals sponsorship and securing commitments and capabilities phase two designing the change plan its objective is to align the corporate mission with the change plan and determine the challenges. And phase three, implemented, implementing the change plan through effective communication program or programs and client management. It focuses on deploying the change. And who will be collaborating? Centrally thinking about uh, uh, collaboration management, who will be the central people you'll be collaborating in this change? So change is inevitable. But if you are going to be working with everybody uh, in the entire organization, 
everybody needs to know that collaboration will be key in this aspect. One of the hats that is going to be put around collaboration and the behaviors around collaboration is trust, which sometimes this change, we don't even know how it's going to end up to be, but we are trusting that by the time we are cutting over this new system of uh, HRMS, that everything is going to be, is going to be uh, captured. Uh, the migration is going to be, it's like, uh, you know, okay, do you think that HR will transfer all my, all my history? Eh, they might leave out some, you know, and I know even the people who had disciplinary, they'll not transfer some of those files because they're your friends. We already are coming from a point of not trusting, you know, so who's going to hold us accountable around collaboration and trust who's going to hold us around collaboration of self-awareness that this is what i have committed to do and this is what's going to happen so the three phases we all know you know communicating leadership taking the the role and then the project team taking the role collaborating with the people that uh, need to be in the bigger picture designing the change plan this is now where the technical expertise comes in and the people who do not have technical expertise kaini kando agree to be left kando once in a once in a while. Uh, some people have that um fear of losing uh, fear of uh, losing out what is that we call it tea or whatever i see it uh, people using it all the time in discussions you know don't fear because you will be uh, it will be uh, it will be communicated to you at the correct time so leave the people who are doing it to concentrate on it and they do a good job and of course implementing the change and this is where really collaboration is a big aspect because everybody needs to be in it together okay any questions the change program phase the change program phase guys any question any reaction what happens especially at the design change plan do plans go the other way do people try to hijack them sometimes alice and I'm picking up from you because we see that uh, in the public sector, sometimes we start with a very good initiative. It's going to cost us uh, how many millions? It's going to cost us uh, 10 million. Then all of a sudden, it's going to cost us 15 million. Now, what happens when the BQs had really been given correctly and we've even uh, two people, three bids, four bids, almost showed that uh, the price will be in the range of nine to 10 million, not more than that. Then all of a sudden, there's um, some people have inflated the cost. So even the length of the, of, the, of, the, of the change program, whatever it's doing, what happens there? Is it lack of collaboration? Is it because people have vested interests? Let's share. And how can we try and make sure that um, people are collaborating better there? Anyone? Please let's share. Phase one, phase two, phase three. Is it always smooth? Has it always worked for you? What have been some of the challenges? How, how have you surmounted some of the challenges? Let's share. Pamela, Nancy, Edith. Lillian, Maggie, anyone there? Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. I believe uh, most of the times uh, it tends to be hijacked mm -hmm. by people who have self-vested interests. Mm -hmm. And they only come to satisfy their own interests and not bother the whole objective of why the change was being done. Mm. So it's it's normally individual interests vis-a-vis -vis the company's interests at heart. Yeah. And that now derails everything. Yeah, thank you. So people trust, yeah, thank you. So people st stop trusting each other. We start forming camps, conflict um, arise, and we just wonder, oh, what, how did we get ourselves here? And when we look now, looking at, we start now looking at the root cause as to why the project is not working, instead of focusing what was really uh, important 
and of was primary concern. So we start getting derailed off. And unfortunately, many people suffer in that aspect and it loses us, it loses the trust element of real collaboration. Okay, great, thank you. Anybody else feel free to chime in. So the communication process and strategy, communication plays a big and vital role in strategic, uh, tactical and, pass at, and personal level in creating change. Uh, communication is important to align the employees and enterprise, that's the company performance with business objectives, enable uh, clients to understand and embrace change throughout uh, through education and persuasion. Maybe those are your stakeholders. We are changing this. It means that um, unfortunately we have seen that if we process the documents within two days, we are liable to a lot of risk, maybe fraud or something. So we need to watertight that. But in three days, the next of the processes will be moving, you know, from one week to, to, to from one week to three days. So there's an incremental, you know, uh, value, value addition to what you are saying. Maybe the first process is what people knew. I wanted it done within two days, but we are saying, no, it's not working for two days, it's three days. And after those three days, it's actually short. And then they see, oh, okay, fine, there's something good. Uh, deliver specific notes on the change. Those are the five W's and the one H. Support feedback, very important review and interaction to ensure ownership and success. And this is really true uh, collaboration, motivate to act. This is where we are. These are some of the challenges. This uh, And these challenges are interesting for us. We are learning, we're able to to resolve some of the issues. But again, even these challenges as they come, we are getting an opportunity to change our procedures, our policies and our systems. That is also how you communicate and you really know that it's not just the change process, but what is the value addition of implementing some of the changes that you are uh, aiming at doing. Involve through strong, what is the need for me approach. You know, what is the need for me? more efficiency, more productivity, um, a more balanced approach to my work uh, as an individual working in this organization. So also ask, what is the need for me? And people will be happy. What is the need for me is not necessarily a selfish question. You know, what is the need for me with this change? This change. And then that's when you shine away and say, this change, this is what's going to happen. And we promise you that um, by the end of it all, you will all be happy with this change. Be To be more efficient and effective, a change management team uh, includes minimum one communication expert who then is supported by the team of communication specialists. And we all know that, you know, the people who now give periodic updates is really uh, the communication experts is the CEO or head of the project, but at the, at, the, at the back office, there are all these experts who are really crafting the communication. You know, sometimes we even have a holding statement so that when it's time to be released, the person in charge of the, uh, the change is the one communicating. So uh, it's important. And um, if uh, some organizations will have the luxury of having a full-fledged communication department, or maybe someone, just one communication expert who works, uh, works for you, or even you have outsourced a PR agency to craft the correct communication to go out both internally and externally. Any, whatever? And of course, duties of the communication team, we cannot overemphasize that, identify the issue, make sure that uh, it's being addressed correctly, uh, create the effective measures to assess communication efficiency and effectiveness so that uh, people do not resist the change, already they are resisting the change. So how are we trying to draw people into accepting the change? Determination of the combined communication tools needed, you know, everything, come one, come all the easiest that is going to reach the people, the simplest as well, but communicating the same thing. You know, we are not talking on email. We've sent an email to all users in the organization and what has been put in the press is different, you know, or even when we are calling a virtual meeting or a face-to-face -face meeting, it's different. So all the communication is centralized 
and uh, even if you're and even if you're using different platforms just to re-emphasize and to make sure that nobody misses the communication the communication should be one the communication should be the same the answers that are, are given at um uh, are asked are replied the same that is some of the things that we really miss and we miss the opportunity of people really understanding this change and embracing the change as it's ongoing assuring that appropriate feedback and review mechanisms exist okay any question there guys any question any question the very last of our slides the very last of our slides okay Question. Coordination and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Anybody who would like to read for us? So two essential components are coordination and collaboration for handling a project. Coordination is the team that will be doing it. Collaboration are all the people who will be involved so that people do accept the change. Coordination is within a location for traditional projects and across locations for distribution of projects. Collaborative project management architects uh, is, is essential to build systems which can overcome the challenges and everybody feels actually that they are in, uh, um, are are um, are within the change process. Anybody would like to ask a question there? Change process within the collaboration management aspect. Is it something that you have faced any challenges? The coordination and the collaboration, the two aspects of uh, great how to implement change effectively. Anybody, please share. <laughs> please share. Anyone who would like to comment on that? Okay. So those are the traditional, allow me to just go to, ineffective and inefficient communication. What happens there is that a misunderstanding due to implicit or poor communication, members having poor graphs regarding the problem, different interpretation by different teams. And within the change process, we will not be able to adequately collaborate because of inefficient communication. So it's important for us just to make sure that even in project management, when we do all these things, because once we agree on a change, the change is going to be uh, implemented by change project managers, we need to make sure that even within those teams of project management, they collaborate, they're actually working together so that by the time they're communicating out the, what they are doing and the achievements, the leader feels that everybody in the project management team has uh, understood so that he can go out, communicate and not have any gaps within that. Any question there? So I'll be very quiet here. Mm -hmm. Inefficient and effective communication also goes to say communication is also inefficient or not up to the mark because of various reasons. Then the first reason would be untimely communication. It's not a good time to communicate this change. And of course, I can, um, from a very good example, from a HR point of view, is where the, let's say we are we are an organization that pays bonuses, for example. Oh no, let's even that's far fetched. Let's talk about uh, a big project like a job evaluation. You know, it's still going on. Maybe we are feeding week on week where the progress is, but you know, we finish the exercise, and of course, people are all waiting. Where's, where has my job been graded? And where will I will I get? Where has my salary been? Placed. Will I get a salary increment? Will I be frozen? Will I be demoted? And the J, the job evaluation committee, I mean, we are talking on the corridors for no good apparent reason. You've been told we finished the exercise, you know the results, but let it be communicated 
by the person who has been appointed, maybe even the CEO. But you know, people are anxious and people start talking on the corridors. And because you have a friend who was in the committee, you tell them, hey, by the way, your job, mm. it was just left where it is. What? They left my job where it is and I do so much. Or even your job was, uh, guess what? Catherine's job has been uh, demoted. Serves her right anyway. There's nothing that she does. And then another one, oh, you know that, Nini? Hey, her job has been uh, promoted. Oh, you know, they're the MD's favorite. So really, uh, we not whatever. So untimely communication. Failure to update latest notification to every team member who needs to know, that's, that's common sense, and poor communication skills and capabilities, mostly cited as the main reason for project failure. Okay. Any, in, uh, any reaction or input to ineffective and uh, inefficient communication for a project that you have done in the past? that you have done in the past, anyone would like to add and how it's stifled collaboration, even maybe it's stifled uh, trust, anyone? Or something that you did that was extremely successful as well so that we can learn from each other. Anyone? Before we go to the last slides of uh, conflict management. Anyone would like to share? I like to call out names. It's easier for me maybe to get a reaction. People think, oh, I've been called. Okay, let me share. <laughs> Anyone from us? Ali, Sidi, Nancy, something that went really well. Pam, Maggie, Lillian. Anyone would like to? Okay, if I may share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about uh, doing a, what do you call it? Uh, mm -hmm. A restructuring process in that, mm -hmm. uh, just doing my job evaluation mm -hmm. and uh, putting grades. Mm -hmm. So just just the fact that that exercise already started caused anxiety and people were like, am I still going to be relevant? You know, now you find that the performance goes down because people focus on that more than focusing on their daily job, yet somebody is assigned. So you find that that is now the hot topic in the company, even though you keep updating them of the steps, that mm. this is what they will say, but people still feel that, no, my job description is not this. Yet we give people opportunity to go through their JDs and mm -hmm. just ensure that whatever they do is captured and they discuss with the supervisor. But still there's that feeling of I left something or I'm, I'm not a favorite of, which is normal as a HR, you have to meet some of those in the company, but how to manage that anxiety is what now makes you come out strong. Exactly, yeah. how to manage that anxiety, you know, uh, collaborating with other uh, peers um, alongside you to say, well, let's support the process. You should be saying this. If you hear this on the corridors, this is how you should answer. You should, um, you should try and allay the fears and show the greater good. What's going to come out of this? And, and I totally, uh, I can relate with you, Nancy, that, um, and that's why I took up that example of a uh, job evaluation. It's, it's really, it's very emotive and people always, no matter how much we communicate, no matter how many people we bring to, to the committee, a representative of all the departments in the organization, a representatives of all CADA in the organization, they will still say, no, 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 no. You know, um, they want to be there every day. Even if we call an expert who is not there and say, well, this job needs to, let, let's call so-and-so because they're an expert um, in, this, uh, in this job for this, for this evaluation of this particular job, they will still talk on the corridors. Oh, they called Catherine today morning. They didn't even understand what was happening. We, and maybe just you wanted to get deeper understanding of that job and uh, what's happening there. So, yeah job evaluation will continue being very emotive and many other things in the organization. So let, let's see, project management um, 
project management, communication around um, projects in the organization, change that is coming, how do we make sure that um, it is correctly addressed um, in a collaborative approach. So finally, conflict management. What is conflict, you know? And how does it uh, affect collaboration in the organization? What can we say about conflict? Anyone who has uh, ever resolved a conflict? Who has never been involved in a conflict? <laughs> Anyone? Uh, never involved, never resolved. You are lucky, Allah. You, you, you are lucky. Very, very, very lucky. Is that so? Tell me how you've how you've uh, lived all these years without any, without uh, getting into all this, so that I also try to get there. Anyone involved in a conflict? Resolved a conflict, and what is a conflict, and how does it uh, affect collaboration? Conflict is I a relationship. That, yeah, mm -hmm. I think conflict is uh, either, and I can call it a misunderstanding or misconception or having just a varied ideas from two parties. And uh, the one experience was between a manager and, a, and a, a, a junior supervisor and a junior staff. Mm -hmm. And basically when we got to sit and get to know how to solve this conflict, mm -hmm. it was this communication, nothing else. It was the way the supervisor assumes that he should know through osmosis mm -hmm. what yeah. she wants him to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the poor guy did not read the, you know, there are things between the line that you can assume, you know, mm. but until mm. we realize that they really told them that you need to write clearly. Tell me exactly. You're breaking a little, Nancy. Yes. Be not a big spoon. Exactly. And yeah. from then, I think uh, we're doing well. Yeah, fantastic. It's all about communication. Um, conflicts come as a result. I don't understand you. You don't understand me. You didn't get my point of view. I told you this is what was expected, you know, and I'm now tired of telling you all the time this is what is expected. You don't seem to get it. Let's go to the HR office. Let's meet there, you know. And you're just thinking, wow, well, okay, fine. This is not what I uh, wanted it to be. The other one is not looking at the issue at hand and really looking at the other person and now saying, looking, it's always Catherine who does this. She never just gets it, you know, and uh, not looking at the issue. And again, we also said about um, the bloated egos where people really don't want to see their egos and say, well, let's do this for the greater good. We are all here. We are governed by rules and regulations. Uh, the culture of the company does not allow this. So it's for us to make sure that we can accommodate ourselves within um, uh, the policies of the organization. So conflict, and we even when we say it's a conflict, I think I keep on saying, well, at, at, the, at our workplace, we should try for it not to get to a conflict, you know? Basic understand and 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 misunderstandings are okay. They are very they, they, they are important because um, it helps us build um, consensus. It helps us look at things differently. It we become more uh, more agile. We become more creative, more innovative. So not all conflict is bad, as we know. You know, if it's actually going to get us. To, to get to the next place in terms of changing our policies, becoming more productive, I don't think that is bad. So misunderstanding here and there just because of difference of opinion will continue to be there, but fully blown conflicts can really be expensive for the organization. So just as it says there, conflicts is a relationship among two or more opposing parties based on an actual or perceived differences in needs, interests, and goals, you know, my needs, your needs, 
your interests, my interests, my goals, what I want to achieve. Me, I want to make sure that I get bonus 100% and you are just slugging and you're the one who's going to come between me and my bonus. Give me my work, give me my work. I need to get in whatever. So you see conflicts really, different interests and different goals. Conflict is part of our professional, uh, personal and social life and often required for the dynamics of change. So not all conflict is bad. Um, the origins of conflicts are often complex and diverse. Multiple conflicts may go on at the same time. You know, yeah, in the same department, conflicts may go on. In the same organization, different conflicts, um, two people having conflicts in the same department, um, uh, two departments having conflicts, you know, uh, around the organization, you know, conflicts from time to time. So conflicts are dynamic, ever-changing and interactive social processes that are difficult to handle if not correctly addressed. And managers, every manager must go undergo either um, in-house or maybe externally, a, a, a course on conflict management. Instill those skills because managers are supposed to handle conflicts. They should not come to HR. They should not go to the disciplinary committee if they get to that level. So, but everybody and even people in the organization must know how to handle conflicts. If it's on one-to-one, -one, well, difference of opinion, instead of it becoming fully blown, we are not talking together. We are the ones demoralizing people in the department because people are looking up to that. That must be stopped because it hampers what? It hampers collaboration. Just look at how collaboration is key around our work, around change management, around conflict management. Okay. So what are some of the causes for conflict? There are five major sources of conflict, regardless of whether the conflict is seen as interpersonal, intrapersonal, interorganizational, communal, or social, you know, interpersonal between me and another person. Intrapersonal, me being conflicted by some of the things that have been done. Maybe the beliefs of this organization have suddenly uh, uh, changed. My supervisor is telling me to do things that I, I know that go against the values of the organization and actually go against against the principle, my own personal principles. So I'm in a intra, uh, interpersonal conflicts, interorganizational, internally, communal out there, or even social, you know? So relationship conflicts, conflicts occur because of negative emotions, misunderstanding, misinterpretation, poor communication. And even this happens at home. You know, if you're married, these are some of the things that you will face from time to time. Data conflicts, data conflicts occur because of lack of necessary information to make good decisions, lack of proper tools, like some of the tools that we discussed earlier that you need to provide your employees for effective collaboration. Okay, so what causes conflicts? Interests, uh, interest conflicts are caused by competition, over perceived or actual incompatible requirements. Structural conflicts are caused due to oppressive, or oppressive patterns of human relationship, like limited resources or authority, geographical constraint like distance or proximity, too little time or too much time, structural, how your organization is actually structured. Value conflicts are caused because of perceived or actual incompatible uh, belief systems. Differences in values causes serious disputes and cannot be resolved through negotiations alone. I keep on telling people, even reminding myself, if I was in employment and I needed to change a job, and that organization, it's nice, but the values go against my values of my upbringing, my socialization, my beliefs as a human being, which someone cannot invalidate, let's say I don't smoke and I don't drink. And I want, and this job, I see this job advertised fits me. In fact, if anything, if they don't take me, it's their loss. And then I remember, ah, but what they manufacture goes against my values that um, drinking alcohol is not good, smoking is not good, then you go, and I go ahead and apply for the job. Sooner than later, as karma would have it, 
you get the job. You love the benefits. You love the, the salary. You love everything. However, you enter and remember, oh my gosh, as if you had been asleep all the time in a dream. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in this grand job. Then you remember Allah. Now you want to antagonize everyone and pull a, a big face, a long face, a long, oh, this is very bad. This is how alcohol is manufactured. I don't even believe in alcohol. So your value believes if they conflict with what that organization does, please don't go. If this organization expects you to, to like in, in, um, in a Muslim environment, the ladies cover your head, put on long sleeved um, clothes and stuff like that. But if you know that you cannot do that, then please don't go and antagonize the value chain in that organization because then um, it will just be cause for conflict. Even so that's why I keep on saying, Potential candidates, check what you are going, you are, you, 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 you are wishing for. And if that's not against your wish, then please don't apply and waste everybody's time. Okay. Uh, collaborative procedures for managing conflict, determining an appropriate response is very essential uh, to the outcome of the conflict analysis. Some key attributes in managing conflicts are, are negotiation and mediation. And we know that, you know, let's let's negotiate you know let's find a common ground for us to be able to do that and for us to be able to negotiate is that everybody should be having um level heads you know the tension has simmered people have counted from one to ten and we are ready to settle there uh, conflict and are able to look at the uh, at, at the genesis of this conflict where it came from but also we are trying to see where actually, what are the analysis? What is the root cause? You remember, we talked about the root cause and for us to be able to have good negotiations and mediation where who's, um, who can help us, you know, bring a mediator in between us to be able to resolve the conflict. Arbitration, by the time we are going to the arbitrator, listens to your side of the story, you listen to these other person's sides of the story. And when the arbitrator really makes the decision, you have to accept the decision that has been made by the arbitrator. Sometimes, unfortunately, it might be made in the favor of the other person and you might not be too happy. But by the time you're asking, okay, fine, let's go to an arbitrator, you already know the kind of outcome that might be. And the arbitrator is always objective and very level-headed. He will not make a decision to, to make the situation worse because they're not looking at Catherine as the person. They're not looking at Alice as the person. They are looking at the issue at hand, just like any other, whether you're negotiating or whether you've called a mediator, it's actually find a solution to the source of the conflict and how we can resolve the conflict what we can learn from the conflict and how we can make sure that we continue collaborating. Um, they are just like what we had been doing before. Uh, duplication, the process whereby the authority, the judge or the other official makes a decision based on the norms, policy of the, whatever it's just like in a court of law. Any question there? Anybody who has used negotiation, anybody who has used the mediation uh, as, to manage conflict, any of these processes, anybody who has used them and has it worked, has it worked for you? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there's one procedure that uh, is better than the other? Negotiation, mediation, arbitration, adjudication. Uh, I think uh, negotiation mm -hmm. to me is uh, is much fairer in that um, both parties bring their their ideas mm -hmm. and their ways on how to solve. And like arbitration, you see, that's a third party who is making. Mm -hmm. And normally, the person who is given against always doesn't be feeling satisfied. So you keep feeling that there must have been a favor and you don't feel 
it was work. But negotiation, at least you're both there if it is disagreeing, but you disagree to agree. Yeah, okay. you, are, you, dis you agree to disagree. Yeah, very, sometimes we use it very loosely, but we do understand what it means that um, we are trying to get a win-win situation and I agree, yeah. By the time we are calling a third party, it really must escalated to a place where we are not collaborating. We are not looking at the bigger picture that we need a third party to come and assist us, which sometimes is necessary and useful. And uh, again, uh, in the organization, we, almost, we also should understand the consequences of um, not being able to manage conflicts uh, not being able to, to collaborate. There should be some consequences that people are aware of so that they don't take these things lightly and say, well, they'll fizzle out. Um, after all, I have come here to work. We don't have to be friends. We must be cordial and respectful to each other so that our work can go on here. Yeah. Someone else? Edith, Alice, Nancy, anybody else would like to contribute to some of the procedures that we can use to manage um, to manage uh, conflicts. Anybody else would like to participate? Would like to add their voice towards this? Okay, great. We're coming to the very tail end. So five steps. What are some of the five steps that we can use? in uh, collaborative conflict management, you know, uh, analyze the conflict, like what we have said, and we all need this, and we all do understand and um, appreciate what it is. Step two, develop a conflict management strategy, you know, strategy around it, what has happened. Step three, inform the stakeholders about this strategy, you know, this, um, we see that uh, we need to put more emphasis in um, just uh, analyzing, developing what steps we are going to take. These are the dates. This is how it's going to be uh, evaluated. This is um, the forms that we are going to use. You know, have a, a real good um, a strategy around that. And we're also talking about how can you actually implement a policy. If, if anything, you can take these steps and um, implement your, your, your policy around uh, resolving conflicts in the organization to enable you continue with collaboration. So inform all the stakeholders about your strategy. And then uh, step number four is to establish the ground rules for the negotiations. You know, let the other person finish, listen attentively, uh, don't have a negative demeanor, you know, all those things really make uh, whatever. If it's going to take two hours, if we feel that the two hours are coming to a close and people are starting to get uh, fatigued, then we call timeout and continue. So really establish the ground rules, you know, phones off or phones on silent when uh, we are getting into that, uh, the steps in managing the conflict. And then number five, explore the issues and the interests for both parties. Uh, number six, we'll be looking at specifying the information needed, you know, be very specific there. And then finally, number seven, we shall be doing what? We shall be prioritizing the issues to enable us make the decisions to solve these uh, issues. And remember that one of the things that we shall be um, within the, uh, from number seven is to keep continuously talking, you know? So step number eight, generate the various options that we can get uh, after we develop um, uh, the, the options. And then uh, number nine, we are looking at developing criteria for evaluating those options, which is the best one, you know, for this. And these things, you do them all the time. We are not saying now we're in step nine, you know, by the time the conflict is given, is coming and it's small and the flame has not whatever, you have already gone through all this. But if it's becoming very big and whatever, and we need to document it and go in and say, today 
is our day to, uh, to, to address this conflict. These are the steps and everybody knows that they are anchored in the policy and they are aware this is the process that it's going to follow. And then step number 10, we'll be looking at evaluating the, process, uh, the options. Number 11, reach an agreement. Number 12, reach, write down the agreement. Number 13, approve the agreement. And number 14, implement the agreement and make sure that we shake hands and kiss and make up, you know, like what we like to use in the corporate um, language. So that marks the end of our um, seminar, just to go through some of uh, the very, uh, so the C for collaboration, in other words, it's the act of working together to achieve a common goal within a time frame. It is used to enlighten the sense of unity and teamwork among managers, supervisors, employees, and the organization. And then uh, traditional leaders in the traditional corporate approach, the power is vested in one single authority. Power is an old tool. Corporate hierarchy is based on longevity and priority of results, like what we saw. ISIM, ISIM is a forum for collective of all organization groups, people who are interested to join, individuals having the same interests of a common initiative that they would like to discuss, collaborate, and find a way forward. Uh, definition phase. In the definition phase, the product plan is designed after getting details of the project plan that is in ISIM. And um, the work and checks whether the product is ready to move to the, the delivery stage. Okay. And project management architect, the project management architect serves as an overall collaborative project management uh, tool inputs and outputs of the system factors that need may be considered by the system, uh, services provided by the system, how services coordinate and integrate with each other, you know? So that's it. Um, I'll open this session to any questions and any feedback, concerns. Was it useful? What are you really taking away from, um, this uh, first day of our conference. Mm -hmm. If I can start. Yeah. Uh, basically, I've uh, picked up on the different uh, ways of having conflict management in the, the negotiation, arbitration, and uh, yeah, at least some some of them I hadn't thought of, but at least now I know of them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Just some of the things that uh, you know you had not thought of, uh, some of the things that you can do in handling project manage, uh, conflict management so that you're able to collaborate, uh, people are able to continue collaborating as they had done in the beginning. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Someone else, takeaways from today, was it useful despite the hiccup that uh, the challenge that we experienced at the beginning? My apologies once again. Ooh, I was feeling so bad. I nearly cried. I just uh, remembered I'm an adult. Uh -huh. Someone else? Edith, Maggie, Lillian, Candy, feedback? Was it useful? Was it useful? Okay. Yes, good afternoon. Afternoon, Maggie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Kadri. The mm -hmm. session was very informative. Mm -hmm. My take home is mm -hmm. conflict management because mm -hmm. I understand that not only I can use it in, the, in our company, I can also use it at home. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can implement mm -hmm. in here in our families, in our organization, yes. Mm -hmm. And the step to mm -hmm. that step yeah. that you're supposed to follow in conflict management, that is something it's new to me. Okay, some of the steps. Yeah, new to me. I hope I will get the notes. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, the notes on the yes, yeah, 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 the notes on the that you'll get the notes. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Maggie. Anybody else? Someone else, takeaways, feedback? Thank you, Catherine. I know I missed a bit on the collaboration element, but uh, that's my takeaway. 
I know that uh, many times people misinterpret collaboration, especially from HR. They think it is interference in their departments or their sections, but actually it's just reaching out so we can see how can we assist you and uh, how can we make your work even better by taking up what you don't need to be doing and the HR can do it for you. So I think um, that was a very good one. And I'm thinking we just need to look at uh, how do we then educate our peers or in the other units to see that you're not going to take away their powers or uh, to interfere with the way they run their businesses, but just complement and see how to always make their work even better. Thank you. That's a great gateway, yeah. Uh, that uh, HR being a strong business partner for the line managers and really re-emphasizing that um, all these issues, conflict management, change uh, process, co um, collaboration, really are strong tools for them to use and uh, they can use them to harness teams, productivity, individual uh, understanding individual preferences so that uh, people remain motivated uh, to do what is expected of them. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Pam. That's good. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, so if there's, uh, there are no more comments, there are no more questions, I really want to thank you once again for your, um, for your patience. Uh, for your really uh, good sharing of experiences and just asking questions around uh, the, uh, the, the topic of collaboration management. And I hope that uh, you'll be able to take one or two points uh, from the hours that we have spent together just discussing this and mainstreaming it at your place of work or even at a family level or societal level. So for me is uh, to wish you a very good afternoon and we hope that we will see you tomorrow as we discuss how to influence people uh, through uh, collaboration uh, as uh, highlighted in this year's um, conference. Okay. So, uh, adios, see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye. Bye.
Ni sasa. Wabui. Mbele le. Mudokoi. Mudokoi wa manuzi aje. Hmm. <laughs> Tala ni mbele. Hako wanko enda agukuti. Sasa siju ya tajimu. Me fica tantita entre eles. Uhum. Tu vifte. Uma coisa da... Tata vifte. Hum. Ok. Sawa, sawa. Munga o Ah, que dor.
but you see, school we get the management. Nifo. School we get the management. Nifo. The management now takes off automatically. Yeah. <laughs> When a list here project is here this year. Come on, I to me a quick machine in your coin document. You know, in Bishop, who are moment in your own brother, the Nasia Kusio and the good leader. I talk about you are going here and Jara. So I would need to me an empathy. He see layer completion. Yeah, the new ones. Ah, can you have a nine at your papa? So I went to look at the thing that the name Kayo Kero, you may be. No problem. In Tom Miracle, throw any answer again. What can you have? Can you have a poor nine? Yeah. <laughs> Yani de Mosongori, Yani, you don't want me to become a millionaire of you. Five years is that because now I think we are on a connection. Simultaneous connections. Leon de Moringa come said. The Gabuki is a very safari. I swear, the memory. Moment that on our beach, a wheelie, I report the candy, and love went on for it or two it there. The Moriti moves in it. Candy on Munoban, Moga, Dora, or a good man, Baboyan, you know, think we have the world. The Moga had a good report, Yaka, who are no eater. The Munyan, you know, the Nevor and Etienne, or Abu and Etima, and be you. Eh. Namu, mother be you, and one of mother be you, I told me, 
And the Maya and Way, go to the Mona Bio, or where were all the embedded? Eh? Eh? Hm. I'm going to get another one, but I don't want to wear and call all my call. Then you go. I'm going to get another one. I'm going to get another one. No one I don't have to tell you that you can't tell you what I am. What you got, young uncle, 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 Hey, Baba, we're sleeping. You're sleeping. Bro, my lady, I can't remember. I'm not going to carry you. I'm going to take the kangaroo. Bro, 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 I'm going to do you want to let the pen of Florida? Do you want to let the pen of Florida? I don't want to let the pen of Florida. I don't want to let the pen of Florida. I don't want to let the pen of Florida. I don't want to let the pen of Florida. I don't want to let the pen of Florida. I don't want to let the pen it's now or never, mm -hmm. uh, by the way. Okay. And they're very serious. Anyone talk with less rango with less adimo? Sasa, where are they serious? When are you? And then, dear, and I am better by Bible and a tune or two, but so and I see you and I was sent it and I am deep. I didn't get out and I help you. I can't quite be a young way and so on. And then I will take you on a ten percent to your carins. I see me. Who matuaded you? Eh, you to the bebut, the bebut. Can you? Ah, the mail. Ah, the mail, but now we have got a mail. It's a little cool, 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 yeah, I'll be eating. I see. That's the point of the text. In your completion, Nataka is in Mukia. Fedano. Anna, see, Nikonai. Is in a completion. Sasa, Sikuna Mukia. I will. Sio si pesa si mwanamke wa pesa imeingia. Sunaona juzi yale ni alisema aje. Ndio hiyo na pesa pia imetoka. Sasa kama huna tu ni sawa. Ndio kwa dawa. July and last. You should do this with the lot of you expect to receive the next disbursement of the 2 million the next week. Yo, sasa mi nataka ya data tu. Yo, next week. Sasa hii ingine misi na kazi ni memalizana. I want the new one. Ya data tu. Ata si kuripizition. Hili nijue. For my info. Hii ingine ni kona ya. Hii ni lipata kitangu. Hii kwa kila pali. Watu wata umba. Eleza kanyuhi, dhe lejua kanyuhi dhe likuwa mekuja kuchengi project, kana niambia ni cancel check. 
So we have no change of project location or amount. In case the MCA insists, find the case to the director so they can put it into rating. Case is standing. Your <laughs> case is standing. Hmm? <laughs> Where are you going to go? I'm going to go to the other side. Yeah? I don't know. Yeah. And what? 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 And Kobi and Dinga and the ten percent. Kobi and the mother is another two. Can you get a room? 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 I But if you're not a contractor, then you're entitled. How officers wait when you're on a Skumango and MC is? So when I was Kumanga, can you? Because every time you go there, no man the Nipa ni kupe. Na hata usanuroko ene liyan 